Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. And today it's uh, about swapping in a older motor or a Japanese motor into a vehicle that, um, an OBD2 vehicle, and uh, OBD1 and Japanese motors do not have a, I believe it's called a crank fluctuation sensor, crank sensor, something like that. But um, this is touching on that uh, that motor from the previous videos where I rebuilt it and uh, just kind of gave a, a brief walkthrough on rebuilding it but uh, now it is in the Civic and I uh, just want to give a brief walkthrough on how I did that so here it is a D15 B7 in a 2000 Civic so this uh, particular D15B7 came out of a 92 Civic, I believe. Uh, if you look, I don't know if you can see that, but right in there um, is a 92 stamp, which uh, I assume means 92, which uh, does line up with the generation of Civics that this engine came out of. So, to get this whole thing to work, it was essentially an OEM rebuild, uh, as you guys saw. They got the, uh, the the timing belt, which uh, I was waiting for at the end of the last video. Got that all put in like stock. And I didn't put an intake manifold on in that last video because I was waiting for the D16Y7 manifold because that's where a majority of the sensors are. So um, Y7 manifold, all the sensors are there. Y7 exhaust. Uh, I cannot run a heat shield because the, uh, the oil... Um, dipstick is right there. It has to come through the, the center of the uh, the manifold. On a D16Y7, it, it's uh, somewhere down there on the oil pump. But uh, So no heat shield. Got to gotta leave it open for that oil dipstick. You run your OBD2 distributor. This is the one that came off the old engine that was bad. Uh, while running the Y7 manifold, you need the Y7 air box. So all that's like stock. Radiators, normal... Uh, the only other sensors on the block would be the two under here, and that's the uh, coolant temperature sensor for the ECU and the single pin one for the uh, gauge cluster. Uh, back here is like normal, that's just the water pipe. Uh, I did have to plug off one line. Uh, there was, I think it was an extra one for the throttle body or something, but um, that went all good. Uh, I used the stock Y7 intake manifold gasket so Y7 gasket manifold you know all the emission stuff goes with the manifold majority of the sensors are in the manifold um, the crank the crank or cam sensor whatever in the distributor to run the vehicle and like I said down there is the, uh, the crank sensor but that's more for just emissions and knock sensor uh, the Y7 didn't originally come with a knock sensor, so I didn't have to worry about that, because uh, neither did the uh, the D15B7 back in the day. Power steering pump lined up okay. The two bottom bolts lined up well, but no top bolt, because I think the, the head is a little taller. So that's uh, that's that. I had to use the, uh, the B7 alternator belt on the Y7 OBD2 alternator. So that's how that worked out. Power steering pump was uh, off the Y7 with the Y7 belt. The AC setup down there is a little squeaky. Uh, I do believe maybe there's a difference in block length or width or whatever. So I think to get it to sit tight, because it's tensioned all the way right now, uh, to sit tight I may need a D15 B7 belt. Now. The whole point of this video is the the, uh, the crank fl fluctuation sensor bypass trick, and uh, I'm going to explain that right now. So you can find it on uh, just Google CKF trick, and the update is just you, you cut the wires. So get a couple of those guys, like four bucks for a hundred on eBay or something. You look uh, for your blue plug on the ECU. So your ECU is in your passenger side kick panel. Take off the kick panel, you'll see the ECU. Take the blue plug off. It'll look something like that. You'll want to crimp together the wires. I believe that's like blue and uh, 
and red. Uh, when you when you go to this website, the, the pictures are um, you can click on them and they they expand out and they're really good quality. So really no confusion there. And then you also jumper these two wires, and that's in an OBD two A. So ninety six to ninety eight. Mine was a 2000, so OBD2B. Plug looks like that. Pretty much the same thing, just different color wires, different shaped plug. Looks like that when you're done. All good to go. And that's it. And uh, essentially what this is doing is it's tapping into the distributor sensor that senses rotation. And it uh, uses that signal to trick the ECU into thinking the actual crank sensor is sending a signal. So um, no check engine light, it runs perfect, starts up every time, made it to the automatic transmission, no problems there. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and post them in the comments. Um, this is just a quick bypass trick and general overview on getting an OBD1 engine to run in an OBD2 wired car. Uh, so OBD1 engine or Japanese engine with no crank position sensor on the oil pump. And uh, that is to run in a 96 to um, 2000 Civic um, or I think it's like a 96 to 2001 Integra. I don't know about any other generations. You'll have to do your own research. But um, as always, Thanks again for watching. If you liked it, uh, subscribe. If you have any questions, post them down below, and I might, uh, I'll might i try and get back to you. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos. Uh, I'm sorry it's not really all that exciting. It's just uh, kind of maintenance videos on my Civic uh, or Civics. But, um, you know, when the season comes along or when the drift season gets back into swing, I'll be doing more drifting stuff, maybe make some drift videos. Uh, I did just take a trip down to Texas, and uh, I may make a video on uh, on some pieces that I brought back for you. It is drift related. So uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned. And here's a quick clip of that D15 B7 that I rebuilt in that previous video. Uh, here's a quick bit uh, clip of it running just in case you're curious on how that rebuild actually went.